Magic is creating the illusion that you can defy the laws of nature. Magic is creating the illusion that you can defy the laws of nature. Science is the study of how the natural world works. This is science. Yeah! Everything is matter. Water, rocks, that chair, Jupiter, me, you, cans, bottles, all of it is made of matter. Anything that takes up space and has weight is matter. The problem can be telling one form of matter from another. Three common states of matter are solid, liquid, and gas. Like this water, for example. Mm -hmm. Looks like a glass of water, but it isn't just water. Mm. It can exist in three different states. I don't mean states like Alabama, Georgia, or Mississippi. I mean physical states or phases. Matter comes in three main physical states solid, liquid, and gas. This drinking water is liquid, but it can also be a solid as ice. And you and I can turn this solid ice into liquid pretty quickly by adding heat. The once solid water is now liquid. It has changed state or phase. And amazingly, the liquid water can now change state again. It can become a gas. The steam coming off of the water is still water, but it's in a different phase. Solids, liquids, and gases are different for a reason. Their atoms have different arrangements. Oh, wow. Atoms are small particles that make up all matter. The atoms in solids, like rocks, hold their own shape well. That stable shape comes from tightly linked atoms. Liquids like milk don't have a set shape. They take the shape of their container. The atoms in liquids aren't tightly linked like in solids. Their looser arrangement means they go with the flow. The atoms in gases are even farther apart. Yes? Gases spread out to fill their entire container. And they can also be squeezed together. Solid ice changes phases into liquid water and steam is water changed into gas. Water is an amazing shape-shifting phase changer. Nothing else changes state with so little difference in temperature. But is the world's largest gummy bear a solid, liquid, or a gas? Surprisingly, it is a solid because it holds its shape. Mm. Most materials will phase change with added heat or cold. Metal is solid, but melts to liquid when heated to high temperatures. That's how metal turns into nails, bikes, and cans. Really cold temperatures cause gases to phase change to liquids and even solids. Need proof? Then look no further than Pluto. 
Not only is Pluto far away from us, it's really, really far from the sun. Oh, wow. That's why it's so cold. High noon there is about as lit up as a full moon night here. So, gases on Pluto are solids. Cooking gas, or methane, is as hard as a rock on Pluto. There are mountains made of solid nitrogen, too. Nitrogen is the most plentiful gas in the Earth's atmosphere. Understanding matter is more than understanding the difference between solid, liquid, and gas. Like everything else in the world, materials we use are made of matter. Materials are substances that people make things from. Everything from wood, stone, concrete, to fabric, plastic, and metal are all materials. This is paper. And this can is metal. But how do I know that? Here are a few properties of matter that matter. Metal is heavy and hard. Paper is smooth and light. Smoothness, weight, and hardness are just a few examples of the properties we use to identify materials. This box is paper and this can is metal. But how do I know that? I can tell them apart by their properties. Here are a few properties of matter that matter. Metal is heavy and hard. It's often those same properties that make a material useful. Steel is strong. This makes it hard to crush. Paper is lightweight, which makes it useful for carrying. But it's not very strong. Density is another important property. This brick is denser than a pillow. But what exactly is density? Density is a combination of mass and volume. Mass is the amount of matter in something. Volume is how much space something takes up. Want to know something's mass? Weigh it. Weight is a measure of mass. An orange has more mass than a cookie. It weighs more. <laughs> the orange also has more volume than the cookie. How do we know? It's larger and takes up more space, so it has more volume. But which food is denser? Density is mass per volume. It's the weight of a particular volume of something. To find out, you need to weigh equal volumes of both, or measure the volume of an equal weight. Let's see how many cookies it takes to weigh the same as the orange. Okay, same mass. Materials that take up a lot of space or volume for a set amount of weight aren't very dense. Pillows, air, whipped cream, and foam are less dense than brick, lead, water, or even cake. A material's density can add to its usefulness. An orange wouldn't be as useful if it didn't fit into your lunchbox. Metals like iron and gold are some of the densest materials and the most useful. Their high density comes from their tightly packed together atoms. They are extra solid solids. Gold prospectors use the valuable metals property of high density to find it. While panning for gold in streams, they scoop gravel into a sieve, while the water and sand wash away. Dense gold nuggets stay behind. Low density things are useful too. Think about the fluffy filling in winter coats. It's not very dense. The filling is lightweight, but very warm. Hardness is another property of materials. It's an especially useful property. Diamond is the world's hardest natural material. Some diamonds become jewels, but most diamonds are used in tools like rock drills, eyeglass grinders, and stone polishers. A diamond is pure carbon. The atoms in diamond are very tightly packed together. Another material made of pure carbon is graphite. It's the gray stuff 
inside most Point. pencils. Graphite's atoms are more loosely packed than diamonds. This makes graphite soft and crumbly, perfect for writing. Imagine a diamond-filled pencil. It would rip your paper to pieces. So, how exactly is the hardness of diamond, graphite, and other materials measured? In 1812, Friedrich Mohs came up with a scale of hardness. Mohs scale represents a hardness from 1 to 10. The hardest is 10, and the softest is 1. A penny has a Mohs hardness of 3. A penny scratches anything with a Mohs number of lower than 3. A penny scratches graphite, but anything higher than 3 scratches the penny. Common quartz is a mineral you've probably seen in rocks. Its hardness is 7, so it scratches a penny. Quartz and other hard materials seem strong, but hardness is not the same as strength. Quartz and diamond might be hard, but both shatter pretty easily. Neither are strong. A material's strength is measured by how well it holds its shape. Did you get that? A material's strength is measured by how well it holds its shape. That's different than hardness. There are different types of material strength. Some materials hold their shape when weight is pushing down on them. Stone and concrete are very strong this way. It's why both are good for building. Other materials can be pulled on without snapping. Steel and rope are very strong this way. It's why ropes can hold rock climbers. And why giant bridges are held up with thick steel cables. Spider silk is surprisingly strong this way. When equally thick strands of spider silk and steel wire are tested for pulling strength, guess what? The spider silk wins! Another property of materials is magnetism. Metals have this property, but not all are as strongly magnetic as iron and steel. Aluminum isn't magnetic enough for regular magnets to stick to it. The world is full of all kinds of materials. They're made into everything from spaceships to shirts. Many materials are hard, dense solids. Others are slippery liquids. Some are lightweight gases. It's their properties, hardness, strength, density, and others that make them useful. But no matter their properties and uses, all materials are made of matter, and that really matters.